Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, today, I really didn't get anything for an inspiration, um, so I opened my Bible app up, and it was already open to Matthew 10 because I did use Matthew 10 yesterday. And then I kind of scanned through the first couple of verses, and I realized something. And I want to share that with you this morning. So the first few verses say in Matthew 10, And when he had called the twelve disciples, or his twelve disciples, to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter. We know him. And Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee. And John, his brother. We know John. Philip and Bartholomew. We know both of them. Thomas and Matthew. We know both of them. James, the son of Alphaeus. And Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite. We know him. And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. <coughs> Do you notice some names that we've never heard anything from? We'll get back to that in just a second. So these twelve, in verse 5, Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Verse 8 is a very, very powerful verse. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now, later in Matthew 10, we see that mentioned again. In a lot of other places, we see that mentioned about receiving those who come in the name of God. So, we see Jesus starting the church. He's like, here are my patriarchs. Here's my foundation. I'm the cornerstone. These guys are building the foundation with me. And we're going to start from here. Ground zero. But you notice when you read this list of names, we only know of a few of these guys. Some of these guys we've never heard from. The only time we see them is here. That is. Uh, let's see. Andrew, up in verse 2, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. So there was two Johns, two James, because the book of James we have isn't from this James. That James is the brother of Jesus. It's a different James. Alphaeus, let's see. So we have names in here. That we have, I mean, I don't even remember that there was an account of how they were contacted. Some of them, I think, may have been fishermen with Peter. But they, we don't hear how they were contacted. We don't hear any, we don't have any epistles from them. We don't have any letters from them. We don't have any accounts from them. And I found that interesting. And it was just within a few minutes that I was considering this. I found that interesting. Why haven't we heard anything about those guys? Why don't we have any writings from them? Why don't? Why is there nothing more, more really mentioned about them? We hear them loosely mentioned here and there, not by name, but by association. Does the fact that they were <coughs> not mentioned specifically take away from their authority or their apostleship? Absolutely not. These men were called, walked, and continued in the Lord. Many of them died very horrible deaths. 
But why don't we hear from them? Why don't we hear about them? Why don't we understand more about what their experience was? Why do we only have a set number of experiences? Well, the experiences we have were the most relevant to what was going on. The experiences that we have, the, the, the testimonies that we have, the, the letters that we have, were the most pertinent to what's going on with the church today. They were the most applicable to future times. These letters were the, the most important for the last 2,000 years, especially our time. They were the most focused on what the message that needed to be done. Now, it may be these writings exist. We just don't have them. It may be that we do have them, but somebody's got them hidden somewhere. The whole point of this is these men were chosen as apostles, and yet we have nothing declaring anything from them in the Bible. Does that make them any less important? Does that mean what they did was less than the others? Absolutely not. And I want you to stop and consider for a minute your own personal ministry, whatever that may be. Because it's easy to get discouraged. And, and this is for all my brothers and sisters that are out there declaring the truth. Every one of you, the y'all that I know, y'all that I don't know, we're all struggling, we're all looking for encouragement, we're all wondering, should I keep going? We're all questioning, is, this, is, this, is it time to stop? Those men that were only mentioned, and some of these guys only mentioned once or twice, and it was just in passing, were just as important as the rest who most of the Bible is about. Or most of the New Testament, anyway. Just because no one knows what you do or knows who you are or considers you or regards you doesn't mean you're any less important. Just because no one is aware of your change and the path that you're going, just because you feel like you've been ostracized from everybody, that doesn't mean you, what you're doing is any less important or any less in, in, uh, important and needed than anyone else. Like I said before, your ministry is unique to you and reaches people that need to hear that message. The things that those guys did, though we don't have any record of them, were nonetheless important and pivotal in the beginning of the church. The things we do now, though most people have no clue who we are, they have no idea what we're doing out here, are nonetheless important to the furthering of the gospel. I dare say some, most of us who the world has no clue who we are, that we even exist, the reason why things are going the way they're going at this point, the reason why the gospel is still being preached is because of us. And not because of us, because of the Lord, but we're some of the only voices out there. The big churches and the big programs and the big channels, they reach a lot of people. The people that are out there that have the big stuff going on, they reach a lot of people. But it's the little ones that are down in the trenches with everyone else, covered in mud and covered in blood, fighting the good fight that are making the biggest difference and the biggest impact because it's more personalized. Every single ministry has an effect in the kingdom of God. Every single ministry has a place in the kingdom of God and God will remember every single ministry. These men that we don't hear nothing about in the Bible, these men that we just have just a few mentions of, but we don't know them personally. These men are, are no less bright in their holy light than the rest. And just because they, we don't know that much about them or didn't hear anything from them doesn't mean they're any, they were any less effective or they're any less important to the foundation. When you build your foundation, you pick the best stones. Jesus picked the best stones for his foundation of his church. So... You're part of that building process. We're up near the top of the building now.
And you don't put building stones at the top of the building. A lot of the stuff at the top of the building is the roof, the decorations, the corner pieces, a lot of the fancy stuff. But they're nonetheless important. Your ministry is just as important, no matter how insignificant it seems, is just as important as every other ministry. It's needed to the building of the church. And in these last times, some of this is the most important part because you can't build a house all the way up and not put a roof on it. Because if you don't put a roof on the house, the whole house is going to come down. Because the rain will come in and the weather will come in and wipe it out. Anybody in the house is going to get wet and exposed. So it's important to have every piece. Your ministry is one of those pieces. What you're doing is one of those parts to build that holy house. And God never, never, not, he, does, he doesn't ever not finish something. It's going to get finished. And you play, play a part in that finishing. Stay the course, stay focused, stay strong, keep doing what you're doing, keep moving forward. Don't give them an inch, don't give them nothing. You stand your ground and you do what your ministry is. If you've identified the ministry that you have, keep doing that ministry. Keep doing that assigned task you've been given. Because when the Lord comes, he'll find you doing that and you'll be blessed for it. There are a lot of people who've given up. They're, they're not going to be found doing what they were called to do. Keep doing what you were called to do. Keep doing this. Keep moving forward. Keep telling the truth. Keep preaching the truth. Keep giving the gospel. Don't let someone else tell you you can't do it. Don't let someone else, uh, you know, try to discourage you from continuing. Because they're not the ones that's going to reward you for your service. They're not the ones who saved you. It's Jesus Christ. And he's the only one that you have to impress. And if he wasn't impressed, you wouldn't be in ministry anymore. You're in ministry because he's having mercy on you. And you are effective where you are and in what you're doing. So this video is for an encouragement to all of you. This video is to <coughs> help strengthen you. And help you to keep fighting and moving forward in your ministry. It may seem like things are slow. It may seem like it's stagnant. You may not be getting comments. You may not be getting likes. You may even not, not be getting views. My views are going down. But I look at that. And I keep on going. Because I know that there are still people out there who need to hear these messages. There are still people out there who need to hear the truth. The Bible told us there was going to be a falling away. It is no surprise it's happening. If even one person can be positively affected by what you're doing, it's worth doing to the fullest. And even if there's no people, it's still worth doing. Remember, the greats of the Bible, Moses, Noah, Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Zechariah, all the greats of the Bible, no one ever listened to them. In fact, the, those men were killed for what they did because the people got tired of listening to them, got tired of hearing them. They were convicted. And yet they still kept going because it was a charge from God. It was a mission given to them by God. Go tell them the truth. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to hear you. Matter of fact, they're going to hate you for it, but that's okay because they're hating you for my name. And if they hate you for my name, you're blessed. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing forward. Keep walking in the living, the armor in Ephesians 6. Keep being faithful and putting your faith and trust in him. Because when the day comes to be revealed, it will be revealed what you've done for the kingdom. And everyone will get to see it. A lot of people are in, in the boat that they're, that, that they're tired, they're ready to give up, they're, they're at a point where they're just like, I don't see a reason to do this anymore. That's when you need to fight more. That's the moment that you need to get stronger and push harder. When it seems dry, like a dry season, you're not getting inspiration. Let the word of God speak to you. It'll give you inspiration. That's what I did this morning. 
and just let it go. Let it do its thing. Let him speak through you to those ears out there who need to hear your message, who need encouragement, who need help and need to know someone cares and someone is loving enough to keep doing their ministry loves the Lord enough to keep doing it. There are people out there that rely on our videos for encouragement every day. It, our ministries in this age right now, at the end of this age, are so important. Because in a world, in a society where people are looking for truth, looking for someone who will give them truth, looking for someone who will help them come to the Lord. And they're not able to find it. You know there's not a single church in the UK right now? Not not a single one. In fact, most countries, churches are shutting down. It's got plenty of mosques going up, but no churches. Well, that's supposed to happen. That's why this little bitty channel that I have here, channels like Paul Woodward, like uh, Diamond Dustification, Barry Scarborough, uh, who else? So many others. Uh, News News, Ross over News News, uh, Chad, Watch My Mama, all these little channels are so important because people are tired of the hoopla, they're tired of the hype, they're tired of being lied to, they're tired of the sensationalism, they want real truth. Tell me about my Lord. I want to hear you speak his name. I want to hear you tell me about him. I want to hear you read that word. Because some people hear your voice read that word and it sounds like garbage to them. But when I hear it, it's poetry. Tell me more. I crave more. Tell me why these things are happening. Show me in the Bible where this is at. Because people thirst and hunger for Christ. But nobody's preaching him. That's what makes our ministry so important and so effective. Because there are hearts out there who desperately want the Lord and don't know where to find him. And they stumble across our channels at the leading of the Lord. And they find what they're looking for. And they get saved. We don't know about it and we won't until the day of redemption. That's, but that's what makes our ministry so important. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving forward. I'd like to offer everyone a prayer this morning for encouragement. Father, we come before you this early morning. It's still dark outside, actually. Give you praise, honor, and glory. Sing praises unto your holy name to preach your works to a world that needs to hear them. To preach your gospel to a world that desperately needs to hear it. To preach your truth to a world where there's very little truth. Father, I see your hand working in the world. I see governments changing. I see leaders being taken down and new leaders coming up in their places, all setting the stage for the final seven years of the age of man. I see your hand working in the lives of the believers, those you have called to specific ministries to do something specific, preaching the truth, sharing the truth, giving people the truth, others in some way of service spreading that same truth. All of us and all of our ministries serving a purpose, having a, just being another facet to the great ministry of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that we have this opportunity and you have found us worthy to be able to do something like this. I pray that when you come, you find us doing this exact thing that you gave us to do and that we do it with fervor and we do it with passion and we do it with in truth trusting in you, knowing that there are times when it's going to be quiet, it's going to be dry. There are times where we may not see that we're effective, but we know that you take all these things and work them for our betterment. Poor Jeremiah is such a great example. It wasn't a, what, almost 500 years after he died that his ministry came into its own. He never got to see the fruition of it. In fact, none of the old, old fathers got to see the fruition of their ministries. It wasn't until years later that it manifested. Just because we don't see our effectiveness now doesn't mean we won't see it then. People like Spurgeon 
Pink, all the uh, others from back then, many of them never got to see any fruit from their ministries, or very little. And it's not until all these years later that their ministries are still producing fruit. It's not about what happens in our life. It's about what, what happens afterwards. And if people remember it. And you do that. That is what you, that's what you push forward. That is how you make a ministry effective. Because the power isn't in the ministry. The power is in you. So Father, I pray that you encourage us to keep going in our individual ministries, to keep doing what you've put on our heart to do, to keep telling people the truth, to keep pushing forward, to keep advancing the kingdom. I have no idea what that was. Hopefully my voice is still going. Father, I pray you keep us going. Keep us moving forward. Keep us effective in your ministry. Keep us focused on doing what you gave us to do to further the kingdom. What a blessing it is to serve our God in this way. What a blessing it is to be a part of building the church in some small way. What a blessing it is to be in this ministry and to serve our great God. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for having mercy on us, for showing us grace, for giving us truth, and for allowing us and trusting us with your gospel. I pray you give us all encouragement and strength to continue to move forward, to continue to do what you've given us to do. So that when the time comes, we have this white linen that is the righteous acts of the saints. When the time comes, we will hear that phrase. Good work. Enter into heaven. That we walk in a way pleasing to you. Father, sanctify us, justify us, redeem us. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for everything you do. The things that we know and see and the things we don't know. Because we know there's a lot more we don't know about that you do for us every day. Times when you spare our lives when we probably should have died. And we don't even know anything happened. Times when everything is quiet and peaceful and wonderful. And when those bad times come, you give us strength to keep going. We thank you for all of that. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. Hopefully you didn't miss very much. I didn't know what that was. However, we do have a very strong coronal mass ejection solar storm. They call it a cannibal storm coming over. Uh, they actually were seeing northern lights down, supposedly down in Oklahoma. So that may have been what it was because I've never had my Bluetooth just shut off automatically like that. Anyway. Don't think for one second that your ministry isn't just as valuable as the others. You keep walking in truth. You keep doing what he gave you to do. You keep pushing forward in the ministry. Because there are people out there that need to hear your message. You may never hear from them. There are people on my channel that never speak. I never get to see their name or interact with them. But I know they're there. And I know some of these messages bring tears to their eyes. Some of these messages answer questions for them. Some of these messages have such a profound impact on them because it is confirming with them what they already knew. And they're hearing it from somebody they don't know. So I'm going to keep going because I know somebody out there is getting it. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus name and I'll see you in the next video.